This is the second part of Lesson 8.2, Special Right Triangles and Inverse Trig Functions. Okay, continuing where we left off on the other video, we've got a few more practice problems to do with this. So 5 through 8, you're going to find the missing sides. So this is where you're going to pause the video right away, and you're going to just do those four problems, and then come back and you're going to check to make sure. If you don't get them right, then you're going to need to go back and make sure you understand what you did wrong and how to do it the right way. Here's the answer for number five. So u is equal to nine halves and v is equal to nine. Okay, for number six, since seven is the shorter leg, you are going to double it to get the hypotenuse, and so that would be 14. To get the longer leg, you're going to multiply the shorter leg times square root three. Okay, here's your answers for seven and eight. Seven's pretty straightforward. Y is going to be the same as the other leg, so they're both 2. And then you take that and multiply by square root 2 to get your hypotenuse. For number 8, Y is going to be the same as the other leg, so 2 square root 10. To get the hypotenuse, you're going to multiply that leg times square root of 2. So that's what I'm doing right there. So 2 times the square root of 10 times the square root of 2. That's going to be 2 square root 20 if that is easier for you to look at it that way. I broke it down to 10 times 2 and then took out a pair of 2. So when you do that, remember it has to be multiplied by the 2 that's already there. That's where I got the 4. So the hypotenuse is 4 square root 5 and then both legs are 2 square root 10. Okay, so now let's look at another type of problem. What if we need to find the measure of an angle of a triangle? So what if I know the sides and so I could find all the sides but I don't know the angles? We can use our trig ratios to do that. So look at number 9 and look at what we have and what we don't have. I have two of the sides. So if I wanted to find this hypotenuse right there, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to do it. So that's no big deal. And so sometimes you're asked to solve a triangle. And when you're asked to solve a triangle, that would be find all the missing sides and find the missing angles. That's what solve a triangle means. And so you'll have questions where you're going to have to do that. Right now, I just want to find the indicated angle. So I just need to find this angle. That's all I need to find. So I'm going to call that angle A. And so if I look at what I have, I have a side opposite and I have a side adjacent. Which trig ratio uses opposite and adjacent? So hopefully you remember that it's tangent. Now this time, I don't have tangent of a number. I have tangent A. And it's equal to opposite over adjacent. Now here's the problem. How do I find what A is? You cannot divide by tangent because remember what we said in the last lesson, tangent divided or tangent without anything else with it. It doesn't mean anything. So tan doesn't mean anything. Tangent A has to stick together. There's nothing you can do to separate those two. So what I have to do is I have to figure out for what angle is the tangent 14 over 22. Is it like tangent of 25 degrees? Is it tangent 36 degrees? So obviously we don't want to sit around just guessing. There is a way to do this. So if you look on your graphing calculator, or really any calculator has this, um, but you'll see the button that says tangent negative 1. And so we talked before about how that button does not mean cotangent or 1 over the tangent. It, that's not what this button is for. This is called the inverse, or sorry, the um, inverse tangent, but it's for when you don't know the angle. And so if I don't know the angle, what I would do is I would do tangent negative 1 of 14 divided by 22. And what that tells the calculator is, tell me what angle has a tangent of 14 over 22. So when you type that in, of course, you have to be in degree mode because that's what we're dealing with here. And so you're going to type in tangent negative 1, so second tangent, and then it'll give you parentheses, and you're going to do 14 divided by 22. And the answer that it gives you, 32.47119. Of course, we're going to have to round at some point. So we'd say um, it says to the nearest degree, so that's going to be 32 degrees. So that means that this angle right here is about 32 degrees. Now, it's not exactly, okay, so if you did tangent... 32 degrees, you're not going to get exactly 14 over 22. You're going to get approximately 14 over 22, whatever that decimal is, because we rounded it. So just be aware that as soon as you round anything, you're going to be a little less accurate. So we would say that that angle is about 32 degrees. Okay, so for number 
10, again, look at what we have. We're trying to find this angle. I have the side opposite and the side adjacent. So again, that's tangent. So I'm going to say, for what angle is the tangent 1 third? Okay, because I'm trying to find like tangent A equals 1 third. So I need to ask my calculator, tell me the angle that that's true for. So you just use your calculator button to say tangent negative 1 and then 1 divided by 3. And you're going to get, if you did it right, you should have 18.43 and then some other stuff on your calculator. Rounded to the nearest degree, that would be 18 degrees. Okay, for number 11, it says, I am given the side opposite and adjacent to the angle in question. So let's draw a picture. I'm going to have a right triangle, and if I have this angle, I'm given the side opposite and adjacent. Which ratio do I use? Okay, so for that one, I'm going to use tangent. Okay, and so that's, that's how I know, like, what to do. And so the equation, just kind of going back to one of these previous ones, is I guess I'm asking for number nine, like what equation would I use? So the equation here is tangent A equals 14 over 22. That should have been a little bit more clear. Um, and then so what you would type in your calculator is tangent negative one, 14 over 22. So you wanna make sure that you have this written on your paper so that when you're doing this on your homework, you know how to go about this. It's really important that you're approaching each of these problems in the way that it's designed so that you're not doing the wrong thing or getting the wrong ratios or things mixed up. Number 12, that's just referring back to number 10, so you don't really have to write anything in there, but that's the thing that we were talking about. Okay, now going to the last couple of questions. Sometimes I have more than one choice as to what ratio to use. So to find the missing angle, we can use a different ratio so we're gonna use one ratio, then we'll use a different ratio to prove that we're right. So if I'm trying to find this angle right here, I've got all three sides. So I could do um, tangent, I'll just call it angle A. So tangent A is equal to opposite over adjacent. What else could I use? I could say cosine A is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. I could say sine, let me get a different color. I could say sine angle A is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And so I can use any of those. So when you do this on the first one, you would type in your calculator tangent negative 1, 56 over 42. For the second one, you would type in cosine negative 1. So second cosine and then 42 over 70. And for the third one, you would type in sine negative 1, 56 over 70. So I want you to try all three of those on your calculator. For all three of them, you should get the same answer. So go ahead and pause the video and try all three. Okay, no matter which of the ratios you used, you should have gotten 53.13 degrees approximately. It doesn't say where to round, so I'll just do that because after that it's a zero. So 53.13, if you're rounding to the nearest degree, we would say 53. If you're rounding to the nearest tenth, we would say 53.1. So it just depends on what you're rounding to. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video and you're going to do number 14 and I want you to do it at least two different ways. So I want you to write at least two different ratios that you're going to use and try them both on your calculator to make sure that you're getting it right. Okay, here's the three ratios you could have written for this. One thing that students do wrong is they forget to do second tangent and they just do tangent. And so if you type in tangent 30 over 72, you're going to get a very different answer, and it's not even going to seem right because it's not. So if you do tangent of 30 over 72, you're getting 0 .007, and so that, that can't be that angle right there. That doesn't even make any sense. So don't do that. You need to make sure that you're doing tangent negative 1, 30 over 72. So this is the inverse tangent or the inverse sine or the inverse cosine. That's different than cotangent, secant, cosecant. Um, so you don't use those keys on your calculator to find like cotangent. You would actually have to do one divided by the tangent. So it's not the same thing. Um, you could also use the button if you were doing cotangent. You could do tangent and then do the key that says x negative 1. That will give you the inverse. We're not, we don't really use that that much though. So anyway, just make sure you're using the right buttons and you should be fine.
Okay, that's the end of this lesson. You should now be able to complete your assignment, and then you should be able to do the quiz.